How big is the largest star? You might imagine a star millions of times heavier than the sun, dominating the galaxy. But in the universe, the giants that take up the most space aren't always the heaviest. The most massive stars burn furiously fast and stay relatively compact, while some lighter ones balloon out to swallow orbits that could fit planets, moons, and everything in between. Right now, astronomers debate whether Stevenson 218, a fading red hypergiant, stretches so wide that light would need hours just to race around its edge. But how do we even measure something that vast? And why does size in the cosmos defy common sense? The answer begins not with the extremes, but with the smallest spark that makes a true star. Earth sits at the bottom of the cosmic size ladder, a rocky ball just over 12,700 kilometers across. Jupiter, the giant of our solar system, balloons to about 143,000 kilometers, over 11 times wider than Earth. But even Jupiter, with all its swirling storms and thick atmosphere, is still a planet, not a star. To cross the line into stardom, an object needs a lot more mass. Pile up gas until you reach about 13 times Jupiter's mass, and something strange happens. The core gets hot enough to briefly fuse deuterium, a heavy form of hydrogen. These objects are called brown dwarfs, sometimes nicknamed failed stars. But adding mass doesn't always mean adding size. Brown dwarfs, ranging from 13 to about 90 Jupiter masses, don't grow much wider as they get heavier. Instead, their gravity crushes them tighter, making the core denser without ballooning the surface. A brown dwarf twice as massive as another might be almost the same size, just far denser, like squeezing a foam ball into a marble. Even at the upper end, a brown dwarf's diameter is only a little larger than Jupiter's, despite packing in dozens of times more mass. This counterintuitive trend continues right up to the boundary where true stars ignite. Only when an object reaches about 100 Jupiter masses, roughly 0.1 times the mass of our Sun, does it get hot enough inside to sustain hydrogen fusion, the defining trait of a star. At that point, the pressure from fusion keeps the star from collapsing further and a new chapter of stellar life begins. Until then, the universe is filled with objects that want to be stars, glowing faintly but never quite making the leap. Mass, it turns out, is only part of the story. The real transformation comes with ignition. At the bottom of the stellar ladder sit the red dwarfs, tiny, steady, and almost eternal. A typical red dwarf weighs in at just a tenth the mass of our sun, barely clearing the threshold for true stardom. Their surfaces glow cool and dim, sometimes less than 1% as bright as the sun. Barnard Star, one of our closest neighbors, is a classic example, so faint it's invisible to the naked eye, yet destined to outlive nearly every other star in the galaxy. With a lifespan reaching up to 10 trillion years, red dwarfs are the universe's patient timekeepers, burning fuel so slowly that none have yet reached old age since the cosmos began. Step up to a star like our sun, and the story changes. With about seven times the mass of Barnard's star, the sun shines 300 times brighter and its surface blazes at nearly 6,000 degrees Celsius. But the price for that brilliance is a much shorter life. The sun will last around 10 billion years before running out of hydrogen. A mere blink compared to a red dwarf's timeline. It holds 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system. 
a gravitational anchor for everything from Mercury to the icy edges of the Kuiper Belt. Climb higher and you reach Sirius, the brightest star in our night sky. Sirius has about twice the sun's mass, but it's already 25 times as luminous and nearly twice as wide. Its surface temperature soars to 10,000 degrees Celsius, turning it into a blazing beacon. Yet for all that energy, Sirius's main sequence life is only about a billion years, a fraction of the sun's. Go further, and the main sequence hosts true powerhouses. Each member of the Beta Centauri pair packs roughly 10 times the sun's mass, unleashing 20,000 times its energy. Their surfaces burn at 25,000 degrees, hot enough to strip electrons from atoms. But these giants live fast and die young. Just 20 million years from ignition to exhaustion. The higher up you go, the more extreme the trade-off. Mass fuels brilliance, but also guarantees a swift end. As stars climb the mass ladder, they shine with increasing fury, but their time as stable, hydrogen-burning suns grows ever shorter. At the extreme end of the stellar mass scale stands R136A1, a star so hefty it defies ordinary expectations. Packing about 315 times the sun's mass into a sphere only 30 times wider. To put that in perspective, R136A1 shines with the energy of 9 million suns, yet its surface could fit comfortably inside the orbit of Mercury. The reason is hidden in the physics of its own brilliance. As R136A1 blazes, it unleashes a flood of radiation so intense that it rips away hundreds of billions of tons of material every second, more mass lost in a heartbeat than Earth contains in all its oceans. These stellar winds act like a cosmic straitjacket, stripping the star's outer layers and holding its surface tight despite the enormous mass within. This is why the most massive stars don't become the largest in size. In fact, astronomers have found a natural upper limit around 150 solar masses for stars born in a single collapse. Anything bigger, like R136A1, is probably the result of multiple stars merging. So, while mass fuels incredible energy and short, wild lives, it doesn't guarantee size. To find the true giants, stars with surfaces stretching out to the edge of imagination, we have to look for a different trick of nature. Once a star runs out of hydrogen in its core, a quiet drama unfolds. The core shrinks and heats up, squeezing itself tighter, while the outer layers respond by expanding outward on a scale that defies ordinary imagination. Gakrux, perched at the top of the Southern Cross, began life only a bit heavier than our sun. Now, in its red giant phase, Gakrux has swelled to 84 times the sun's radius, a sphere so large that if placed at the center of our solar system, it would nearly reach Mercury's orbit. But Gakrux is just a preview. Our own sun is destined for a similar transformation. In about 5 billion years, it will balloon to nearly 200 times its current width, engulfing Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth. Stars with more mass take this swelling to even greater extremes. The Pistol Star, a blue hypergiant near the center of our galaxy, is about 25 times as massive as the Sun, but its surface stretches out to 300 solar radii. Rho Cassiopeiae, a rare yellow hypergiant, boasts a radius of 500 suns and shines with a luminosity 500,000 times greater than our own. These giants are unstable, burning through their fuel quickly, 
and shedding their outer layers in massive stellar winds. The largest surfaces in the universe belong to these swollen, dying stars, cosmic balloons that are bright, brief, and always on the edge of collapse. Now we reach the behemoth that sits atop the record books, at least for now. Stevenson 218 is a red hypergiant with an estimated radius of about 2,150 times the sun. To picture that, imagine placing the sun at the center of our solar system and stretching its surface out past the orbit of Saturn. Light would need nearly nine hours just to race around its circumference. The fastest jet ever built would need five centuries to complete a single lap. If Stevenson 218 replaced our sun, its glowing edge would swallow every planet out to Saturn, leaving only the outer giants untouched in the cold beyond. But the truth behind this cosmic monster is tangled in uncertainty. Its size comes from measurements that depend on knowing exactly how far away it lies, and even the best estimates carry more than 50% error. The star's outer layers are so thin and dusty that defining where the surface actually ends is a matter of debate. Some astronomers argue that what we're measuring is more like a warm, drifting envelope than a true stellar surface. Others point to the possibility that Stevenson 218 isn't even a true member of its supposed cluster which would throw all our numbers into chaos. For now, Stevenson 218 stands as the largest known star by radius, a title that could change with the next round of telescope data. Its record-breaking size is both a triumph of astronomical measurement and a reminder that in the universe, even the biggest numbers come with a question mark. Experts agree that Stevenson 218 stands as the current record holder, yet caution that future data, especially from space telescopes, could revise its rank. What remains certain is that giant stars like these play a crucial role in creating heavy elements and shaping galaxies. The search for the universe's true giants continues, driven by both technological advances and the fundamental physics of stellar life cycles.